going to show you how to use a cumulative frequency graph to answer questions such as finding the median, upper and lower quartiles, the interquartile range, things like that. In this exam question, it says the cumulative frequency diagram shows information about the time taken, t seconds, for a group of girls to each solve a maths problem. We have to use the cumulative frequency diagram to find an estimate for the median to start with. Now the median is the middle value in a set of data when it's organized from smallest to largest, which it already is. And before we can work out this middle value, we need to know the total frequency, okay? So we can see this from the diagram. If you look at the last part of the diagram, just here, and read off the corresponding value on the vertical axis over to the left, okay, 80. This tells us that there are 80 girls all together. So if we want to find the middle of 80, we have to divide the number 80 by 2, which is 40, and then you have to look for the number 40 along the vertical axis where it says cumulative frequency, okay? So once you've found the number 40, this is the middle value, you need to travel along to your graph, and when you hit the graph, you travel down and you read off the corresponding value along the horizontal axis where it says time in seconds. So hopefully you can see that the time is 54 seconds at this point, okay? Each little square along the x-axis is equal to 2 seconds. So if this is 50, we have 52 followed by 54, okay? So that's the median. For part two, we have to work out the interquartile range. Now this is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, okay? So we need to work out what that comes to. So the upper quartile can be found by taking the total frequency, so 80 girls, and multiplying it by three quarters. Okay, so when we do this, we get 60. Okay, and you need to look for the number 60 again on the vertical axis, so it's up here. Okay, and once you have that value, just like before, you need to travel towards your diagram. And when you hit the graph, you then travel down and you read off the corresponding value along the horizontal axis. Okay, so I would say this is approximately 65, okay? So the upper quartile is 65 seconds. Now we have to do the same thing for the lower quartile. So to work out the lower quartile, you take the total frequency again, so 80 girls. And this time, because it's the lower quartile, you multiply by one quarter, okay, which gives you 20. So you look for the number 20 along the vertical axis here. You travel towards the graph just like before. When you hit the graph, you then travel down and read off the corresponding value along the horizontal axis, and it is 36. Okay, so I'm going to write 36 here. So then we have to subtract these two values, okay? So you just take the upper quartile, 65, and then you minus the lower quartile, which is 36, and you get 29. So this answer here is the interquartile range is 29 seconds. In part three, we have to use the cumulative frequency diagram to find the 20th percentile. So this time, what you need to do is take the total frequency, so 80 again, and this time we're going to multiply by 20%. Okay, if it said 30th percentile, you would multiply by 30% and so on. Okay, so when you find 20% of 80, you should find that it's 16. Then you have to find the value 16 along the vertical axis. So the number 16 is just here because each little square along the vertical axis is equal to one unit. So if this is the number 10 here, up here, six squares above will be 16. So once you found your value of 16, you travel towards your graph. And just like before, when you hit the graph, you travel down and you read off the corresponding value along the horizontal axis, which is 32 seconds, okay? For the last part, number four, it says, use the frequency diagram to find an estimate for the number of girls who took more than 66 seconds 
to solve the problem. So this time we're going to use the diagram the other way around. We've been given the number of seconds. Okay, remember seconds is written here along the horizontal axis. So we need to find the number 66 along here first. So 66 is just here. Okay, and this time we have to travel up towards our diagram instead. Okay, so it's the other way around. Okay, it's better to use a ruler if you're in an exam. So you're traveling up towards your diagram. Then when you hit the graph, you can travel along to the left where you must read off the corresponding value along the vertical axis, okay? And it has to be accurate. And I can read here that it's 62, okay, on the vertical axis. Remember, the vertical axis has each little square equaling one number. So if this is 60, it's two squares above, so it's exactly 62. But we haven't finished because this means that 62 girls took a time of... 66 seconds or less, okay? We're looking at this part of the graph, okay? It's always underneath the graph when you take that number. And in the question here, it says, find an estimate for the number of girls who took more than 66 seconds, okay? So we need to work out the number of girls here from 62 to 80. So you take the total frequency, so the total number of girls, 80, and you subtract that number 62 from 80 and work out what it comes to, okay? So you should get 18. So the number of girls who took more than 66 seconds is 18. In this exam question, it says the cumulative frequency diagram shows information about the floor area a meter squared of each of 80 houses. We have to use the diagram to find an estimate of the median to start with. Now remember, the median is the middle value in the set of data when it's organized from smallest to largest, which it already is. So if we want to work out the middle value of 80 houses, you must take the number 80, divide by 2, and it gives you 40, okay? So the 40th value is here, okay? You have to look for the number 40 along the y-axis where it says cumulative frequency. Then you have to travel towards your graph, and when you hit the graph, you then travel down to read off the corresponding floor area value, okay? So you should be able to see that the value is exactly halfway between 80 and 100, so the median is 90. For part two, we have to work out the lower quartile. So to work out the lower quartile, you take the total number of houses, in this case, so 80, and you multiply by a quarter, okay? So when you do this, you get 20. From here, you have to find the number 20 along the y-axis again, where it says cumulative frequency. And then, just like before, travel along to your graph. And when you hit the graph, you travel down and you read off the corresponding value for floor area, which is 68. Now, if you're not sure that that number is 68, okay, it's a good idea to work out what each of these little squares is worth along the x-axis first. To do that, you need to look at these numbers here, okay? You should be able to see that from 40 to 60, there are 20 units, okay? And in between these numbers, 40 and 60, there are exactly 10 little squares here. Okay, you have to take the number 20 and divide by the number of squares, so in this case 10, and that gives you 2. That means each little square along the x-axis is worth 2 meters squared. Okay, so if we're trying to work out this value here, 68, you would start at 60 and count here 62, 64, 66, 68. Okay, now for part 3, we have to work out the interquartile range. Whenever you have to calculate this range, you have to work out the upper quartile and subtract the lower quartile. Well, we already worked out the lower quartile in part two. So let's try and work out the upper quartile. So to do that, you have to take the total number of houses, so 80, 
and multiplied by three quarters, okay? So it's always three quarters when it's the upper quartile. When you do this, you get 60. So if you look for the number 60 along the y-axis, it's up here, okay? Now from here, you do exactly like before. You travel along to your graph, and then you read off the corresponding value down here on the x-axis for the floor area, which is 120. So this is the upper quartile here. So the upper quartile is 120. We have to subtract the lower quartile, which is 68. And if we do that, we get 52. OK, so that is the interquartile range. Now, for the last part, we have to work out the number of houses with a floor area greater than 120 meters squared. So this time, we have to travel the opposite way on the graph. You have to look for 120 meters squared, okay, which is along the x-axis, meters squared. So 120 is here. I know it's a value we've already used, but let's pretend that we haven't already used it, okay? So you look for the number 120. This time, you would travel up towards your graph like so. Then when you hit the graph, you would travel along to the left and read off the value on the y-axis, so 60, okay? So what that means is 60 houses have a floor area of 120 meters squared or less than 120 meters squared, okay? We're looking at all these houses here, okay? But the question says, Find the number of houses with a floor area greater than 120. And I just said less than 120. So the houses that have a floor area greater than 120 will be these ones here. Now you should just be able to see from 60 to 80, there are 20 houses. Okay, so that's the actual answer. Okay, alternatively, you take your number 60 and you subtract it from the total number of houses, 80, which also gives you 20, okay? So that's the answer to part four.